The year is 1518. The place is Strasbourg, a bustling city in what is now France. A strange and unsettling event is about to unfold, an event that will baffle onlookers and confound historians for centuries to come. It begins quietly, almost imperceptibly, but soon escalates into a terrifying spectacle. This is the story of the Dancing Plague, a bizarre and tragic episode of mass madness that gripped Strasbourg and left an indelible mark on history. Imagine a city in the throes of an invisible, inexplicable epidemic. It is not a plague of fever or chills, but one of uncontrollable movement. Men, women and even children are seized by an irresistible urge to dance, their bodies twisting and contorting in a grotesque ballet. Days turn into nights and still they dance, their faces etched with exhaustion and terror. They cannot or will not stop. This is the unsettling tableau of the Dancing Plague. The Dancing Plague, also known as the Dance Epidemic of 1518, stands as a chilling testament to the power of the unknown. It serves as a stark reminder that even in the face of seemingly rational thought, the human mind can be swayed by forces beyond our comprehension. What began as an isolated incident quickly spiralled into a collective frenzy, challenging our understanding of both individual and societal behaviour. The events of that summer in Strasbourg continue to fascinate and disturb us, even as we grapple to understand what truly transpired. The Dancing Plague's origins are shrouded in mystery, but its ignition point is often traced back to a single woman. Frau Trophea. In July of 1518, on a seemingly ordinary day, Frau Trophea stepped into the street and began to dance. Her movements were erratic, uncontrolled, almost violent. She danced for hours, her face contorted in a grimace of pain and confusion. At first, onlookers were merely curious. Some may have even been amused by Frau Trophea's bizarre behavior. But as the hours turned into days and Frau Trophia showed no signs of stopping, a sense of unease began to settle over the city. Her relentless dancing, devoid of any apparent joy or purpose, hinted at something darker and more unsettling than mere eccentricity. People whispered about curses and demonic possession, their anxieties fueled by the superstitions of the age. Frau Trophia became an object of fear and fascination, a harbinger of something unknown and potentially dangerous. Little did they know that her solitary dance was only the prelude to a much larger, more terrifying spectacle. Like a firestorm, the inexplicable need to dance spread. Within days, Frau Trophia was no longer alone. Dozens of others, seemingly struck by the same unseen force, joined her in the streets. The dancing plague, once a solitary affliction, had become a collective madness. The streets of Strasbourg transformed into a swirling vortex of bodies, a chaotic ballet of the unwilling. Men and women from all walks of life, young and old, rich and poor, found themselves compelled to dance. They danced until their feet bled their bodies racked with exhaustion, their minds teetering on the brink of delirium. The relentless rhythm of their movements echoed through the city, a constant haunting reminder of the invisible force that held them captive. Fear and confusion reigned as the dancing plague tightened its grip, transforming Strasbourg from a place of commerce and culture into a stage for a macabre and inexplicable performance. As the mania spread, scholars and physicians of the time scrambled to understand its cause. Some believed it to be a punishment from a wrathful deity, others speculated it was a mass hysteria triggered by the stresses and fears of the era. There were even those who suspected the presence of a toxic mold in the local grain supply, causing hallucinogenic effects that drove people to dance uncontrollably. Desperate to find a cure, the authorities consulted priests, doctors and astrologers. 
Makeshift hospitals were set up and musicians were hired in the hope that structured music might soothe the afflicted. But the dancing continued, a relentless tragic spectacle that seemed to defy all attempts at intervention. Eventually, as mysteriously as it began, the dancing plague subsided. The streets grew quiet once more, leaving behind a city bewildered and scarred by the ordeal. The story of the dancing plague of 1518 has since become a cautionary tale, a historical enigma that continues to baffle and intrigue. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments below. What do you think caused the dancing plague?